Welcome to the live steam build of Charles, the pen ridden quarry engine. This is being built to 1 12th scale to run on gauge 1 or G gauge 45mm gauge track. Let's get back into the loco build. As it's running season, I thought I would progress the smoke box and have been slowly working on it since the start of the year. Here's Charles's smoke box. I refer to this image a lot to get the proportions and to count the rivets. Here's the drawings. I use these in conjunction with the previous image. Marking out the ring that is visible in the picture of Charles's smoke box that the handrail is mounted on and the door closes against. 1.6mm steel sheet. 2.68 inches diameter to fit. The outside has been sawn, then ground to the marked line using the hacksaw and bench grinder. The central hole has just been reamed 5 16 inch for mandrel turning. The blank turned quite true. Taking a light cut with a carbide tip tool. The disc fitted. The inner edge was rounded with a file to account for the braze fillet of the smoke box. Sawing out the excess with the piercing saw and 32 TPI blade. Four holes were drilled to allow me to get the blade in and move the job about in the vise. Finish bored to 2.1 inches to match the smoke box opening. Using the handy grooves in the chuck jaws to hold the piece away from the jaw face so I could get the boring bar right through. Turning complete. That disc previously used in brazing the smoke box will be used to align both bores when securing the ring. Eight equi-spaced holes marked out using the tables in my Zeus book. I use the dividers set by the electronic caliper for the spacings, with the electronic caliper set to describe the pitch circle diameter line. The first position was marked with permanent marker ink, the PCD line marked with the electronic caliper, then the hole position dot punched for the dividers, then for the rest of the hole positions, scribe the bare steel with the dividers, on with the marker pen ink, then rescribe with the dividers, then the PCD with the electronic caliper, and finally the dot punch. This was very satisfying, the marking of the final hole. Up until then I had my fingers crossed that the dividers were set accurately enough. Drilling the pre-drilled 1.4mm diameter holes through into the smoke box for 10BA tapping. I've got some tiny, smaller head hex screws for this. Prior to drilling, the two bores were aligned with that steel disc and the holes lined up straight with the axis. Not all eight holes were drilled in the end. Starting on the smoke box door. It was turned from a piece of 60mm free-cutting mild steel, held in the forejaw for rigidity. Using a tip tool, the major outside diameter was turned to 2.3 inch, and the minor was turned to 2.1 inches, but with a 3 degree taper to ease engaging with a smoke box. This is a lesson learned from the quarry hunslet, to allow for hinge inaccuracy. Drill through for 5 32nd inch reaming. Parting off as deep as I would go, leaving about 1 inch diameter for hacksaw ring. I syringe cutting oil into the cut. It cut very nicely. Reversed, and in the three jaw for facing off to length. The bore was reamed too. Try as I might, I couldn't stop the job from wobbling on the soldered mandrel. Twice I reheated and reseated the soldered joint, but this was the best it came out to. There's more than one way to skin a cat. The job is true enough in the chuck, so I skim the mandrel to true it up. The soldered joint is strong. The mandrel is one inch diameter. 
I generated the three degree taper by manual CNCing in steps. The lathe compound slide was unable to be used. That's a 0.4 inch diameter central piece to replicate that on the original. The finished profile, smoothed and radiused by filing. The finished smoke box door off the mandrel. I wiped off all the solder that I could from the rear face when it was molten. Forming the eye on the hinge straps. I'm using a 332nd inch rod for the hinge pin. These strips are from 0.6mm steel sheet, sawn and filed to 0.140 inch wide. The first eye has been silver brazed. The hole was drilled through to clear out the excess braze afterwards. Both done. They turned out well. These strips are over length, to be trimmed to size after fitting. The straps roughly in position. From the image, I calculated that the straps should be about 0.7 inches apart, as measured by the gap. Precision taped in position with a spacer tube holding them apart the correct amount. Facing off a piece of 3 16th square brass for the hinge body, it's okay to use a three jaw carefully. Here's the hinge coming on nicely, two holes for rivets to locate it. The hinge is just about finished, just need to round it off a bit, getting the position sorted out before drilling through those holes into the large ring. The hinge was located with rivets and then silver brazed to the ring. The excess is being milled off so the door can be seated flush. I was a bit over enthusiastic with applying the braze. Hinge straps screw down with tiny steel 10BA by 1 quarter inch round head screws. Having a go at forming the locking bar brackets. I persisted for quite a while before giving it up mainly due to not accurately drilling the fixing holes. Here's the milled versions from a piece of 3 16th thick steel bar. I used the junior hacksaw to accurately saw them in half with the minimum kerf. Cutting oil was used. Brackets. I'm just working out where to put the fixing hole so that it's covered by the ring. Brackets screwed in place, locking bar fitted. With accurately positioned holes in the brackets, I set them up on the front face, with the bar there too, clamped with toolmaker's clamps, positioned using the electronic calipers to get the bar bang in the middle, then drilled through. The brackets were tapped 10BA, and are held by brass countersunk screws, so the ring can be placed on top. After centre drilling the fourth hole for a dummy screw, I found it off centre, so I pulled it over a bit, with the round needle file, Checking with the 1.4mm 10VA tapping drill that it wasn't going oversize, then finished drilling it out. The strap has been tapped 10VA and the dummy screw screwed in tight. The screw was snipped off with side cutters and then filed smooth with the face. One done, the other to do. Hinged and swinging, the hinge ends have been rounded off. The door is back in the lathe to skim out a recess to complete the flange effect as on Charles. It's 0.2 inches diameter by 0.1 inch deep. I use a tiny boring tool for this. Here's the male piece for the flange, made from quarter inch bar, drilled for reaming 5 30 seconds and turned to 0.2 inches diameter. In position ready for soldering, I soldered it in the garage preheating with the LPG blowtorch, and the plumber solder was applied with a 80 watt soldering iron. Plenty of solder was applied to make the cast fillet effect. Back together so that I can measure up the dimensions for the dart. The first half of turning the dart, turn from 3 8 steel for a 5 30 seconds diameter and 7 BA threaded on the end, each section about 3 16 long. I turn the finished piece in two stages. I skim the 532nd diameter to size when completing the turning. Finish turned with 110 thou AF square filed on the end of the 532nd diameter for about 3 16 long. 
I use the vice jaws as a filing length stop. 532nd is the across corners dimension of the square. I got the square as flat and as true as possible by hand, measuring with the electronic caliper. The handle to turn the dart. Drilled 110 thou, and then filed with a square needle file that was fortunately just smaller than the finished size at its widest. The threaded handle boss. Turned 0.2 inches diameter. It's been partially parted off so that I can get it in with a file to round it off. Tap 7BA, ready for parting off. This is how I silver braze the handle piece on. Upside down in the vise. 332nd steel rod handle. Fluxed up, ready to heat with a tiny flame with me on my knees. The handle has a 1.8mm diameter by 50 thou step on it, so it doesn't go too far in. And the boss drilled 1.8mm. Carefully marked out, centre punched and lined up in the bench drill. It takes just 5 minutes in the citric acid to get the flux off. I had to re-tap the boss to get all the excess braze out of the threads. It was full of it. The nearly finished dart. The diameter needed reducing near the head to allow passage through the one eighth inch slot of the locking bar. Halfway through cutting the head down to allow it to pass through the locking bar. I'm enjoying bench work now with my headphones on. A junior hacksaw and files were used. The large chamfer is to aid alignment, probably isn't needed now. There's about 140 thou end-to-end -end movement of the locking bar in the smoke box. I had to increase the length of the slot by that amount, or else I couldn't open the door as the bar moved. My first proper smoke box door handle arrangement. I'm very pleased with it. The finished door. The hinge pin has been cut to size and a steel head brazed on then turn to size. The pin is 3 32nd inch diameter by 1.1 inches long and the head about 150 thou diameter by 50 thou long. I didn't fancy trying to turn a 3 32nd diameter over an inch long. Thanks for watching.